33 minutes after the first call for help, the med chopper lands on the roof of the hospital. When you get a patient who's unstable and takes way whisking in here within a matter of 10 minutes of the injury, even if they're 30 miles away, without them they die. No question. Though his head wounds are bloody, restaurant owner Fernando Garcia's injuries are not nearly as critical as those of the man who tried to help him. Got it? The trauma surgeon on call is Dr. Robert Zeppa. Apparently some wounds were waiting for the owner outside the his restaurant. We picked him up in the parking lot, started to beat him. And uh, this chap was a customer and apparently went to his help. Dr. Michael Stamos examines Ray Amaro. We're getting x-rays now. He's stable. But I went ahead and handled the gun to one of the admin because it sounded like he was going to need emergency surgery. He actually had what looked here to be a shotgun blast uh, to his left upper quadrant of his admin with a fair uh, amount of spread. We've never called 188149 asking me to get down to right away. Explain to him what we're going to do. Just elap, a pair or whatever is injured. May have to remove uh, spleen or whatever is injured. We may get a colostomy. We need a one-shot IVP real quick first. A one-shot IVP. Because he got his kidney. I want to make sure the other one's working. Well, the x-rays showed a large number of fragments in the abdominal cavity. Okay, he's got priority one. There may be multiple holes in the intestinal tract, and we got to close all of them. Just to leave one open is dangerous. Excuse me, somebody got the elevator? Yeah. As we're preparing him for the surgery, there was a difficulty in placing a tube that allows the anesthesiologist to breathe for the patient during the operation. Give me a nice quick yes, go. We had to make an incision in his neck and enter the trachea directly with the tube in order to breathe for him. Yes, give me a quick, quick. Give me a tube, quick. Give me a tube. Somebody give me a tube. Okay. It's in. Let's go. Damn it. At that time, uh, he stabilized, and we proceeded with the operation. Once you're in the abdomen, the x-rays don't really help you a lot in this kind of situation. You've got a large number of pellets, more than 20 or 30, and the only way to know what's going on is to examine every single organ individually, one at a time. You have to be very systematic and make sure you don't miss anything because a missed injury in this sort of situation is lethal. Got a bunch right here. We know we're clear all the way to here. Mm -hmm. Right here we begin. One, two, let's go. Not a boy. And he had several pellet wounds to his small intestine as well as one or two to his large intestine. There was a couple of pellets in the area of the blood vessel supplying the spleen requiring us to remove the spleen. Just clamp it. Put a clamp on it and we'll sign off. In a trauma room, Fernando Garcia is also treated. His wounds were all superficial. He was admitted and watched overnight carefully, seen by the neurosurgeons, and then he was discharged home the following day. I feel I'm lucky that I'm alive. He tried to save my life. No matter if I was the owner of the restaurant or no matter what I was, he don't know nothing to me, I don't know nothing to him. He was my customer, he know me, he did it all for me. Mr. Amaro, over the next couple of days, did very well, and about post-op day two or three, he began having some respiratory uh, problems. He then went on to uh, develop a pneumonia. Uh, he rapidly deteriorated and required increasing respiratory support. This pneumonia, once it got a foothold, just ate away his lung. And despite aggressive antibiotic therapy and all the other maneuvers that we use to combat pneumonias and bad infections, he continued to deteriorate and uh, went on to expire. They came to the restaurant to see me, to tell me news that, that he passed away. It's like you lost something big. 
something like you won't forget you know your life I cry many days Ray Amaro had come to this country from Cuba nine years earlier his only close relative here was his cousin Blanca we were brought up together he was the only family I had over here he was a guy who was real active, real happy, always having a good time. Ray was the type of man who didn't like abuse of animals, people. That was the heroic part of him. Ray had never been happy with his life in Cuba. Several times he tried to escape by raft, only to be caught and returned. The first thing that he said when he got to Miami was, now I can die happy because I'm in a freedom state. I really feel sad and at the same time happy because the love that he had planted all over was so great. I'm sure he did it for his fellow man and he would have done it for any stranger. Paramedic Scott Harper found the news of Amaro's death hard to accept. We hate to lose anybody, so I was very surprised and shocked. We certainly had high hopes for him. But this was a man that obviously uh, was a caring person and uh, wanted to do something for